Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in this video, we're going to look at how to turn this into hedges and greenery for your model spread. Turning scouring pads into hedges and greenery is a staple technique for model builders, and this is for good reason. It's both easy and cheap to do. In fact, it's become such a staple technique for model builders that pretty well every model builder has their own take on how to do it. These builds can range from straightforward, quick and easy, so you can get them done and put them on the table right away, to something that's a little more complex and that involves a little more artistry. In this video, I want to take you through my technique for turning cheap scouring pads into hedges. My method revolves around a trade-off between creating something that is suitable for the wargaming table or even for dioramas or displays, while at the same time not breaking the bank and not taking up a lot of your time. I start by measuring out the shape of the hedge itself. And this is pretty easy because most scouring pads come in lengths of about six inches. So I'm gonna set each section of hedge to be six inches wide. When this is figured out, now it's time to build a base. And I build these bases just like any other base. I get out a sheet of cardboard, measure out the length and the width, and then create a second layer with a cardboard grain that runs in the opposite direction, but is exactly the same size. Now I use hot glue to glue these together to make sure that each base has two layers, one layer with a cardboard grain running in one direction, and the other layer with the cardboard grain at a right angle to the one above it. When the glue has set, I then get out my masking tape and go around the sides. This will seal off the edges so that any moisture from paint or glue doesn't go in and cause the cardboard to expand. It's now time to cut the scouring pads and we've already established that the bases are going to be the same width as the scouring pad itself or about six inches so I decide to cut each pad section so that it's about one centimeter deep from top to bottom. This will be the perfect height to form a hedge for games of Flames of War or other games that involve 15mm scale. Obviously, you could change the scale as you see fit based on what type of game you're playing. I chose to use the hot wire cutter because it's quick and efficient, but if you had a sharp knife on hand, you could use it to cut the scouring pads as well. With the scouring pads now cut, I go back to my hot glue and I hot glue each length of hedge to the top of each base. When this is set, I then get out some sharp scissors and round off the corners and cut some irregular shapes into the hedge to make it look like it's not all neat and perfectly tended to. Now I get out some watered down Mod Podge though you could use white glue if you want, and apply it over the scouring pad for each hedge. I then sprinkle this liberally with some model builder's turf and with some loose sawdust flock. After this is set on, I get out the Mod Podge again, water it down even more, and use a pipette to apply it over top. This is just to add an extra level to seal it down. Now, obviously, the scouring pad's very porous, so I then leave this all alone overnight so that it can dry. When the turf and flock has dried, then I get out various natural color tones and shades of green, and I put them in my airbrush. I focus primarily on dark greens, and I go pretty heavily over the scouring pad. Then I spray in spots lighter tones of green, or sometimes beige, to imply some variety to the foliage. When all this is dried, and I have a suitable variety of color on the model, then 
I grab some dark sand, which is sort of a yellowy beige color, and lightly dry brush it at the top to add a spot that implies light is reflecting on the leaves at the upper edge of the hedge. With the color on the hedge now well in hand, I decide it's time to start adding points of visual interest and little details to the base. I follow my usual procedure and I get out some cutoffs of pink styrofoam, some broken up matchsticks, a few small pieces of balsa wood, and some miscellaneous pieces from different sprues, including a wagon wheel that I thought would look pretty good leaning up against the side of the hedge. Then with my hot glue gun, I go ahead and start gluing the stuff down at random and anywhere where I want to make it look like the area is in fact lived in and that there are some people around. Now it's time to add the grit to the basis, and I do this using my usual techniques, that is using Mod Podge and black acrylic paint. You could use white glue if you wanted, but I just find Mod Podge dries a little stronger and dries a little faster. First I take the Mod Podge, pour it out, and then mix in the black paint, probably 75% Mod Podge to 25% paint, and then I go ahead and spread this thickly over the base. While of course this is still wet, then I sprinkle it with grit, and as always I use a mixture of about 80% sand to about 20% kitty litter. When the grit is on, but while the glue layer is still wet, I take out some rubbing alcohol, mix in a few drops of black acrylic ink, and with a pipette, spread this back over the grit. This will break the surface tension on the glue layer, and then I go over it again by watering down the Mod Podge even more, and apply yet another layer over top of the rubbing alcohol. Then I leave this overnight to dry. When the grit has dried, it's now time to start dry brushing the base and adding some color. As always, I start with a dark brown, and then I move on to a tan. I go back to the rocks or any of the stone details that I've added, and I paint them with a dark gray, and then highlight them with a light gray. From here I go on to give the whole base a dry brush of off-white, and then lastly, I follow up with pure white, which I use sparingly, mainly on the rocks and just lightly over the top of the grit itself. At this point I also go in and paint the individual details on each base, such as the wagon wheel or the discarded wood. Now I can start my favorite part, the landscaping. And I start by painting on a thick coat of Mod Podge and patches on each base, and then I sprinkle down a couple colors of static grass. I start with light yellow and use some shades of both dark and light green. I always find it's good to have a variety. After this is done, I glue down some grass clumps and some lichens, and then I move on to putting down some deadfall. I do this by taking a very watered down coat of Mod Podge and spread it here and there and then sprinkle over top of that with oregano. Dried oregano looks like leaves or deadfall and it helps the model smell nice. This pretty much finishes it up. I get out some black acrylic ink, line in here or there around rocks or specific features on the base I want to bring attention to. This just creates a little contrast around them. And then finally when that's done, I spray the bases with a couple good thick layers of matte varnish. And with that, this project is done. Now I have some hedges that aren't only just visually interesting, but they also add some character to the gaming table and provide some interesting options for linear terrain for my wargaming. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is supported entirely by its viewers. 
please consider supporting me by checking out my Patreon page or head over to my Etsy store where you can purchase many of the projects I feature in my videos. Please stay tuned for new content twice weekly on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is your source for model building, miniature painting, and diorama content. If you've not yet subscribed, make sure you do, and press the bell button to receive immediate notification so you do not miss out. Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.